guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nathan Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post some videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, this video, um, <laughs> yeah. So, I was supposed to record my three-year anniversary video. I didn't get a chance to because I actually wasn't home on that day. Um, I had spent the weekend with my son and his father, so we had our little, like, family weekend together, so I didn't get a chance to actually make that video, so I plan to record that video this week because I do have two giveaways coming with that, one for YouTube and one for, um, Instagram. I'm possibly gonna squeeze in a third one for the Facebook group, but, um, just before that video comes, I want to thank every single person who has been with me from day one, day 20, the second year, the first year, whatever, whenever you have joined DOI. Thank you so much. Um, we're literally almost at 4,000 subscribers here on the channel, which is, it's mind-blowing because when I started this channel, I literally was in a state of not knowing if I wanted to get back onto YouTube because I originally had a beauty channel, which I do like the beauty community on, on YouTube, but it's very much saturated and not as informative. <laughs> is that the word I want to use? I don't know it's just very competitive and saturated with the beauty community so i kind of fell out of love with makeup and if you guys see my other videos you pretty much know my short story with the whole makeup artistry thing um how god had to take that passion from me but um i knew that i wanted to get back on youtube and god was like start a channel start a christian based channel because there wasn't a lot of christian based channels out there um and the ones that were out there were more lifestyle channels that weren't really showing god um, and they weren't channels that were edifying me personally. So, um, yeah, as I was studying the book of Esther and I was on vacation, I said, saw the channel and I said, okay. <laughs> and so I did it. Um, I actually launched a channel, I think in September, but, um, DOI was created on July 26, 2017. So yes. And there is a new ministry being birthed. Um, it is still a part of DOI, but it's more of like the baby of doi which is going to be called daughter of grace that will be launching on august 15th with its own youtube channel own instagram and everything um the instagram is daughter of grace ministry um and i'll give more information about that probably in a three-year update video um because that's something that god has placed on my heart and just short just for short because people who were who are a part of the facebook group know a little bit already because i shared but um daughter of grace or dog is basically um it's kind of like the first step in really being able to increase in everything else because you really can't increase in faith love territory or anything like that unless you really fully understand the grace of god um what it is and how to give yourself grace and I know I have some teen subscribers as well who sometimes don't fully understand what I'm saying because I am an adult. So God placed it in my heart to start a teen's ministry. Um, it's more so geared towards 12 to 18, 19 year olds. But um, of course, you women, of course, can definitely join in. Men as well can join in on the ministry. But um, I'll be breaking things down a little bit more for teenagers to understand. Um, but it's kind of like the first level and then once they graduate from DOG, they then come to DOI um, So with daughter of grace is literally understanding what grace is God's grace um, The grace that he offers us freely how to give grace to yourself give grace to others And then once you really have an understanding of grace Then you can then increase in everything else because you can't increase in faith if you don't allow yourself to Give yourself grace or understand the grace that God God gives you and um I know as a teenager, I didn't fully understand it. Um, I still didn't understand that as an adult. And when I had my little breakdown, when that vlog had went up, um, God was like, you need to give yourself grace. And a lot of you ladies were also telling me in the comments to give myself grace. Um, so that's just something he inputted in me. That came to fruition June 28th. Um, so yeah, it was a Sunday morning and he said, daughter of grace. And I said, okay. So I ran with it. Um, I did get some help from one of the first ladies at my church with picking the scripture and things like that, as well as my sister Stephanie and Angela. Um, so yeah, that is going to be in a whole video, but I'm just letting you guys know. So the, the YouTube channel is not posted yet, but um, the Instagram is, so you can join the Instagram, but it's basically for women in DOI who have teenagers that um, want 
to do Bible study or they want to get their children involved but don't really know where to start, I'm creating DOG for that. Um, and of course, like I said, women are, you know, open to joining it as well because I know a lot of you ladies are actually interested when I shared it on the Facebook Live video that I did. Um, we're definitely going to be doing a study on grace because I think that is essential and crucial for us to, to know about grace, especially in this season. Um, but anyway, this video, okay, this video is going to be my actual August TBR. So, my TBR for August is a little hefty just because um, I'm partaking in, yet again, another readathon. Whoop de whoop. Um, yeah, I like readathons. They keep me accountable to my reading habits and they're fun. So I'm taking part in Tone Topple um, round 12. And I think I mentioned this in another video where I was doing Tone Topple before. Um, and Tone Topple is created by a booktuber named Sam. Um, and it's basically where you read books that are over 500 pages long. And it's a two week readathon. So for this month, it's going from the 8th to the 21st, if I'm not mistaken. So it's two weeks. And, um, my tbr is pretty hefty for that i mean it's like six books so it's not hefty but again they're over 500 pages so um in total one book is 756 pages another is 523 another one is 542 another one is 571 and another one is 580 books i mean pages so that's a total of 2972 pages we're gonna leave it there um I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys and I have my music on in the back so yeah I was listening to music before I decided to make this video but I'm gonna show you guys um these are the books <laughs> that I plan to read for that uh readathon um and I think I'm missing one book that will be coming tomorrow yeah uh, I like fantasies but I digress so I decided that for August I was gonna be real low-key with um, my Christian novels because I have a lot of fantasies that are like hefty and um I want to challenge myself so I have my picks okay I have my picks so some of them you've already seen if you've seen my August uh, bingo TBR thing I did the August bingo TBR video that I did but um, the first two are by the same author because I one I'm very grateful that this author actually reached out to me and two I've been dying to read both of these books so I'm gonna do reading vlogs for both of these which I'm super super excited I actually missed doing reading vlogs I probably should have did reading vlogs for like the last three four books that I read but I didn't yeah um but the first book is gonna be Hava the Story of Eve by Tosca Lee and this is literally just biblical fiction about Eve and Adam that's pretty much it um and this is a book I've been wanting to read from her for so so long I got this in one of my Delilah boxes so we have this beauty I will be reading this of course all of my books are already split so this is a three-day read for me but we have this and I'm starting this literally August 1st so August 1st I will start my reading vlog and hopefully this pans out because you guys know sometimes I think it's the perfect time to actually start reading because my son is going to his dad's this weekend I won't be going so I'll be home to read so we have that and then I also have The Legend of Shiva by Tosca Lee and this is another one I've been wanting to read so you guys, if you if you if you've been up to date with me for a minute, you know how I feel about um the Queen of Sheba by Roberta Kelstor. <sighs> I'm not even gonna grab the book. That book was a hard DNF. I don't know if I'm gonna pick it back up. I don't know if I'm gonna keep the book, get rid of the book. And it's I'm I'm sad because I did request that book from the publishing company. But I don't like the writing. I don't like the way that they have portrayed Solomon, the way he talks, and the name that they gave um her in the book because they call her Bilquis, um, but I also know that Bilquis is actually a goddess in another culture, and she is more of a sex goddess. So, I don't like the fact that they call her that, and I know about Bilquis, um, mm, so that turns me all the way off. I got 100 pages in and DNF that book, so I talked about it, and Tosca Lee has told my post on Instagram, and she actually reached out and was like, she would, you know, send me a copy of her book. The Legend of Shiva. I was like, you know what? That's great because I this book has been in my cart for forever on Amazon and thrift books. I put it in my cart, took it out, put it in, took it out. I'd have read, uh, I already read um, Iscariot, which is her biblical fiction on Judas. Loved it. So I was like, you know what? Yes. So I figured, why not just read both of these back to back? This one came out first. I'm gonna read this, then read this, and let you guys know my thoughts. I'm hoping to at least, at least a four stars, at least a four, like a four, four point five, five. We're good with, but. I need something better than the one that I read because emotions emotions okay and then I think I have I'm missing a book oh here we go 
so then we have on this foundation by lynn austin this is the third and final book in the restoration chronicles me and my sister stephanie over at quilting beauty and books have been buddy reading this trilogy and oh my god book one for me is literally is called return to me that was like a five star for me book two which was which, what was book two called i don't remember <laughs> um keepers of the covenant so book one return to me is all about zachariah and Haggai. Haggai, how however you pronounce it the prophets um book two which is keepers of the covenant is all about ezra and i gave that a four stars i enjoyed it but i wasn't invested in the characters so i only gave it a four star um so this one is about nehemiah now i love me some nehemiah after reading um tessa afshar's harvest of rubies and harvest of gold <laughs> we love nehemiah so um i'm hoping this is a 4.55 sorry but we're definitely buddy reading this for the month of august so this is an august pick then i need to finish following up with um of course the left behind series i just completed book six which was mind blowing mind blowing gave that a 4.5 but book seven is the indwelling I'm not ready but I'm ready and I'm super excited I didn't separate this one yet and um I probably should do that I have actually been listening to the audiobooks of this um like I'll start reading and then I just completely zone out and listen to the audiobooks because the audiobooks really bring it to life for me so um I've been enjoying that but yeah the indwelling is book seven cannot wait this is literally a series all about being um left behind during the rapture and dealing with the seven year tribulation that's basically it the book of revelations in book six we got to see the horsemen and oh whew, it was amazing it was amazing so i'm excited i haven't given any of the books a four point i mean i haven't given any of the books a five star yet but they've pretty much been a four or 4.5 for me which is great i'm hoping that one of these is at least a five star because i'm enjoying the series i'm just not loving it too much but book seven and it's a 13 book series with a three with a trilogy prequel so it's like 16 books total in the adult version there is like a teen version as well and i know there's a movie so um hopefully i love it enough to want to watch the movie afterwards but we have the indwelling by tim lay and jerry b jenkins so this is book seven in the left behind series okay and then we get into the books that i picked from my bingo tbr so of course we have stay with me by becky wade um it's contemporary romance and what i like about this is that it follows a uh bible study teacher Bible study author, excuse me, and there is a guy named Sam Turner who Sam Turner who was the owner of a historic farm. Now I read this, but I didn't really read it, and you guys know what I mean. If you've been a subscriber for a minute, you know you understand, okay? Um, basically, when I say that I read it, but I didn't read it, is I read it, but I didn't annotate it, so I really wasn't like focusing. I was reading it quickly for the purpose of a review, but I didn't annotate. So I remember that I enjoyed it. That's all. So yeah we're gonna read this we, and I, I, I this cover is actually just like amazing to me i love the, the bokeh and the pink yeah so then we have ronnie kendig storm of right storm rising which is book one of the wars um this is a suspense and all i know is that this is with the navy sale it takes place in it's not romania bulgaria so it takes place in bulgaria it deals with the navy sale and it deals with uh the old the book of prophecy yeah it just sounds interesting so i'm down for it and that was pretty much the hype i know that books two, book two was out and i think book three is either out or coming out so i need to read this because book two i think is a red cover like it's i think it's a woman on the cover and it's like more red than blue so if, i hope i like this enough to get the sequel we'll see but we have this book here then i had picked out rj larson's the prophet which is i believe this is a story based on deborah I believe I heard that it is like a biblical fiction why a retelling of the story of the prophet Deborah the judge so I don't really know but I heard that and it's, it's been stuck in my head that it was about Deborah because I know that there is king and then there is judge king is all about David of course and judge I believe is about Samson so I know that Deborah was a prophet or prophet excuse me don't really know but I'm, I'm gonna fly with it so yeah rj larson's the prophet <laughs> and then i have this book which i'm not looking forward to the king's mercy by Lori benton um it's historical fiction it's set in i don't even know where this is set in north carolina and it deals with a scotsman in the oh lord is this the 1700s oh it takes place in the 1700s 
if you've seen that big book bingo tbr video then you know why i picked these books but i'm not looking forward to this okay so then we get into my nonfiction. so the other nonfiction from that book bingo is going to be this unseen by priscilla shire it's a 365 day devotional for teenagers um and this was the only book that i had on my shelf that had deckled edges so yeah i'm probably not gonna do 30 days we'll see um 31 days excuse me it's 31 days in all so we'll see but i'm going to read through some of these um and it's pretty much a devotional for teenagers so i have it i might as well try it out um then i have two other things so the plan was to actually get through this in july that didn't happen that mm -mm. see the problem with me is with these devotionals um, excuse me, these Bible studies. So, Tessa Afshaw, The Way Home is a six-week Bible study from Moody Publishers. Moody Publishers, the way they set up their Bible studies is more of a devotional style. So, um, it's five days a week, two days off, um, but it's it's really in-depth. You get your Bible out, you study your word, you answer some questions, you really think about it. It's more of a devotional-based study. Problem is, I always start them and never finish. And if you guys saw my Bible study collection video, you know what I'm talking about. I start and never finish. I got to week one, day two. So I only made it two days in. And I mean, I was into this. Like, this was really, I just, I don't know why I never, I think because I was feeling the way I was feeling and I was going through a lot of emotional, like, feelings on the inside, you know, that it just, it didn't happen. But um, I was enjoying it. And I love the video content too. So I was getting well into the study you guys can see um yeah and i stopped on page 29 so i i want to get back to the study and of course i have the dvd to go with it because we need to um no words disgraceful um when it comes to these studies i really want to make it a habit to really sticking to them but a lot of the times i just let the lord lead me and sometimes he will lead me out of that study to something else but again i just haven't been i'm not even going to sit here in front I have not did a personal Bible study in a long time, um, and I do plan to do um, a weekly vlog that I've seen um, another another Christian YouTuber do to help her be accountable. Um, so I'm thinking about doing a video like that. You can click the eye screen to go see the video I'm talking about. I can't remember her name right now, um, but she did a video where she would wake up every morning, record herself doing her studies and sharing her thoughts to make herself accountable. And I feel like that's what I need to do. Just everything with this COVID and then my son, um, you know, being home and then schedules are just all out of whack. So I have not, you know, been doing personal studies whatsoever. I've been keeping up with my church. Um, bible studies my church is we have services three times a week um we have midweek service on wednesdays we have friday night services and then we also have our regular sunday services we did have bible studies on tuesdays for adults and then thursdays for teens we have stopped that for the summer break of course but um just personal study like me going through like the book of mark <laughs> or finishing up studying restudying john <laughs> haven't done it i'm still in the book of psalms so i need to figure out a way to force myself to do that and if I might have to just not do like devotionals, devotional plans um, and do my, my studies twice a day to get me back into that. Because you guys know I used to love being in my word for hours upon hours upon hours. But I'm not going to lie, I haven't done it in a while and I miss doing it. And that's partially probably why I feel the way I feel at times because I haven't had that time where I'm spending it in depth. And this is not to say that you have to spend hours in the word no if you only can spend 5 10 20 30 40 minutes that's on you that is how you communicate with god but because i know that i can go in for hours and that god knows that i can go in for hours it's been weighing on my heart so much so yeah um but i also have two more non-fiction so this one is resuscitating evangelism by jordan easley and ernest easley this book I am an ordained evangelist, if you guys didn't know. Um, got ordained in August of last year. So definitely want to read this, especially because in this season, we're seeing a lot of people not evangelizing. Um, and it's not about you being an evangelist as like a title, but just evangelism in general, sharing the gospel with people, the good news. Um, that's not happening a lot, especially in this season. A lot of, especially a lot of believers are not doing that. Um, so I really want to read this and I think that if I like this enough because my mom has a copy as well if I like this enough I think um, this will be a uh, sort of a book pick for my church because we are trying to get into the habit of reading books um, within our ministry as leaders to help develop and grow ourselves so I'm hoping that I really like this enough to share it with them because I think this would really be great um, especially since my church is really big on 
evangelism so we have that um and then the last one i have is this one the man of passion and destiny david by charles r swindle and i got this actually from my local library i don't even know how probably a year ago two years don't know but um it's literally just sort of a study it's a profiles and character from charles r swindle on david i'm not sure if he has like other ones like this but this cover is like the cover without the dust jacket is really nice and because I actually am doing a Bible study on David with my brother, uh, we haven't done that. That's another thing I haven't really done in a minute. But, um, oh, he has other books as well. He has other ones as well. So he has like some mini ones on Abraham, David, Esther, Moses, and Nehemiah. I need to look on, I need to look up those. I'm looking now at like the other books that he has. So that's interesting. But yeah, this one literally just talks about David. And I love David because he teaches so much about um, being a Christian. Like, he is a real authentic human being who makes mistakes. But he also knows how to quickly repent, how to seek God. And, um, I mean, David made so many mistakes. I mean, he done raped someone. He done killed someone. He, he done done a lot of stupid stuff, okay? But um, he was still called a man after God's own heart because he was so quick to repent. He understood his relationship with God um so I really want to do an in-depth study I think I do want to do like an actual bible study here on the channel um I already mentioned that I wanted to do like a woman's study but I think I do want to do like a men's study as well like studying some of the men of the bible and correlating it to us as women um because we can learn from you know of course the men and the women in the bible so we're going to be adding this um possibly adding this I'm going to try to squeeze this in <laughs> and if not this will definitely be my September um TBR because like I said, I do have those other books that I need to get to. So the main nonfiction I'll be reading for the month is this. Along with that other book. Is it on my shelf? The Emotionally Healthy Leader. Because I haven't picked that book up for a minute. So yeah. Um, but yeah. Big old TBR. A little excessive. But it's okay. I'm confident I can get through it. For this month, I've read about 26 books. Which is outstanding for me. Um, I'm again I'm used to reading anywhere from 15 to 22 books a month um, but you know since May hit no not May February March since March I really haven't been reading in the way that I used to read um, that's how I knew something was wrong but I'm like I feel like I'm getting back into the zone of reading that many books that I like so I'm super excited so I'm going to end the video here thank you guys for watching reading comment and subscribing um the next video will be in the same outfit I'll be doing my May June and July reading wrap up um but yeah that is it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye